a hey, shalom, shalom. First off, I'd like to say, call halal, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shabbat Hashem, Rakakudash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim, that's pushing the word in all sincerity and faith. Uh, for the few sisters that watch and believe, shalom to you as well. Shalom to the new fruit, the new believers, the new viewership coming into the faith. Uh, I just want to come back with another lesson. I was just meditating on how just the state of decadence and just moral um, turpitude, you know, I learned a new word. So I guess I just wanted to just kind of expound on the, what I looked up in this word or turpitude. I believe that's how it's pronounced. But it's pretty much no one has a fear of the Heavenly Father. No one has any regard for having a, a standard and abiding by a standard and a code of conduct to live. It's just a complete free fall. Do as thou wilt. Nobody can judge me. This whole crazy, hardcore, uh, liberal mindset is just destroying this place, man, in every sense of the way. As far as the, the mindsets of the people. So it's just going back. Just like in the days of old, just like during the time of Noah, during the flood, because that's one of the reasons why the most high he had to judge the earth at that time by the flood, because wickedness was just at a all time high level. And we're getting to that same point, man, to how at this appointed time, you got to just always consider, can it get any worse? And I may end up titling the lesson something to that effect. Can it really get any worse, which we know that it ultimately will but the hope for the elect is that prophecy is going to reign true and once we get through the bitter you know it's going to be sweet for the elect if we're those that we're set to endure to the end and complete our course but for the majority of this world they're going to have to receive judgment you know most of the people that's occupying the planet earth they're here to receive their judgment because wickedness is just going at an at a all-time pinnacle. And the most high, he's going to have to make a move, just like in the days of old. And I'm right here. I'm going to start at the Genesis. In Genesis, the book of Genesis, the beginning, uh, chapter 6, verse 5, it says, And the most high, Yahweh, saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And doesn't that ring a bell? It seems like the same pattern of behavior that's going on today to me. There's, no, there's nothing new under the sun, like it tells you in Ecclesiastes. If, with the, 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 the advances in technology, having uh, access to the Internet and social media and all of these different platforms like YouTube, like people are even able to dig deeper into their wickedness, man. Especially if you got resources, you can just ball out in wickedness, man. Verse 6, Genesis 6 and 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. So the Lord, the one who the world ignorantly calls God and his son, Yahweh Shad, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. They're grieved in the heart at the state of the world as we know it, man. And we understand ultimately because there's a base nation of people that have been set up to rule. Like it tells you when you read Daniel, the fourth chapter, the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. And he set up over it the basis of men. So right now, a base nation of people is ruling the planet Earth. Esau, Edom, the, the, the Edomites, you know, the nation of Edom, the red Hebrew Edomites, you know, so we can't go around that. And that whole, just as the ruler himself is, so are the people. So that's why it's just mass wickedness going on in the earth right now, man. So the Most High, he's going to have to bring judgment. He always sets these other heathen nations up to rule for an appointed time, and then he'll bring them down. Just like even going back to ancient Egypt, like he did Pharaoh. You know, Esau, Edom, they're also the modern day Pharaoh. Because this is also spiritually uh, Sodom and, and Egypt when you go into the prophecies, man, concerning Babylon, the great in prophecy, which we know is America, you know. But right now, just through the great whore America, when you read Revelation, the 17 and 18 chapter, the great whore America, you know, which is America's Babylon, you know, the whore 
have been a melting pot for the many nations to come over here, make money, enterprise, and then most importantly, do wickedness. Just live out your heart's desire. There are women coming over here, uh, just coming into the feminized mindset and being liberal, just being demons, not having any order. So Babylon had destroyed all the other nations too. But just through Babylon today, you know, the, the, the philosophies of the wicked, that's made the earth in a state of turmoil. That's why it says in Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. But ultimately, just like during the time of Genesis before the flood, the most high, I'll just read seven, Genesis six and seven. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that I have made them. Verse eight. But Noah, Noah, which means comfort, found grace in the sight in the eyes of the Lord. So we're hoping to be the elect. Noah in his household, that was the elect at that time that were saved on the ark. Through Noah's family, that's how the earth was repopulated through his sons, you know, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. But there's going to be an election that's going to be reserved in this modern day destruction, according to prophecies, that's going to happen to Great Babylon as well. And the reason that the Most High has his eyes set to destroy Great Babylon is because wickedness is even at a higher level than at this time back in Genesis, man. People are able to just go completely crazy, man. And it's getting worse. That's why we're pilgrims passing through this place, man. We really should pray that the Lord get us out of here sooner than later. Because it's only going to get worse before it gets better. You know? Through much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom, even if we had elect. You know, we're going to have to go through Jacob's trouble, the hour of temptation, you know. But ultimately, the elect is going to prevail. But, yeah, I want to get this real quick. This is in 2 Ezra 2 and 13. It says, go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. So we got to pray for fewer days in this place. There's already been a kingdom prepared, which ultimately the nation of Israel, the body of believers, the elect, first and foremost, under Yahweh Shah, that represents the kingdom, no matter where we are. But we understand, according to prophecy, once Babylon, the great, the virgin daughter of Babylon is brought down, then the, the, the deliverance of the elect and then the kingdom of heaven is going to be established on the planet Earth. So we got to be prepared and watch. And while we prepare and watch, we preach the word, man. We edify the, the body of believers, the elect, to continue in the faith and holding fast to the faithful word until Yahweh Shah comes to deliver us according to prophecy, as it as is it written. But there has to be a change that's going to come. Ultimately, that's what I'm going into as well, because things are just going too far left. Any and every type of behavior is just acceptable and everybody has a platform and an outlet to push their truth and, you know, my truth and, you know, just whatever ordeal and lifestyle and quirk and idiosyncrasy or whatever. Everyone's able to just push their own deception according to the heart. Like it tells you in Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who could know it? So everybody's going according to their own vain imagination and not living on the moral co compass of the of the scripture, because the, through the Bible, the Holy Bible, the scriptures, that's how you establish what's right and what's wrong. Not according to your own heart or your own opinion. As it says in the scriptures, man. And two thirds of our people and all that are heathen nations, mainly Esau, Edom. They're not they're not living according to the, the, the moral standard. That's why things are completely out of order. That's why just the quality of life. I mean, it's just I mean, it's, it's just getting it's diminishing day for day. That's why the, the, the children today, like in their teenage years and stuff like that, they call them Generation Z. 
because that's the last generation pretty much. It's nothing after Z. They're, they're just pretty much bugged the hell out and they're through. You can't try to really teach them like how things are really supposed to play out. You know, Esau, he's destroying the natural course of things. He's just attacking nature. Like, you know, like I know the elder Yashawamba and just other, you know, the apostles go into this all the time. You know, Esau, eat them the wicked there against nature. But I'm going to go to second Ezra's 15 and um, and six. I'll start at five. Second Ezra 15 and five. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death and destruction. So that's what's coming to the earth as we know it. Different plagues, all of these different pestilences and diseases, whether they're manufactured or not. These are all things that the Lord is preparing for this place, even if he's using Esau, Edom to do it. It says the sword, you know, a lot of people, man, just going to be gunning each other down for the lack of bread in the great tribulation. Famine, you know, the food price is going crazy. You know, a lot of these companies laying people off. It's just a lot of different things happening simultaneously, you know, that marks the, the end of the, the wicked empire. Grab Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. It says death and destruction. So a lot of these people, mainly here in Great Babylon, America, and just throughout different places in the earth, they're going to they gonna receive, you know, their judgment. But the main judgment, of course, is going to play out in the whore. You know, America, Great Babylon, the virgin daughter of Babylon, is going to be pierced with many arrows from these other nations that are going to come up to war against Great Babylon, even their allies. There's going to be a third world war. Second Ezra 15 and 6. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So wickedness is pretty much it's just went through the roof. So just like I read in Genesis, the sixth chapter, the most high, he's grieved at this place, man. And of course, he's subject to prophecy. So things are all going to happen on the benefit of the elect if we endure and, and complete our course. But continuing on, not so much good news for the, the majority of these people. Second Ezra 15 and 7. Therefore, said the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me and the souls of the just complain continually. So, you know, the most highs, you know, he's going to commit judgment to the majority of the people, man, in this earth that are living according to their own vein of bad imagination. And doing all manner of wickedness, man, starting with Esau, Edom, the, the chief of wickedness, you know, and talking about mainly those that control resources in this society. You know, and the souls of the just complain continually to the Lord to deliver us out of this condition. Because at this point, that's the question I ask. Can it get any worse? And it will. But it's like, damn, it's, it's like, bro, it's, it's getting it is getting worse day for day. That's the point being made. But that shows we're at the end of this thing. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, like the scripture says. So, yes, it's time to just reset things, man. This is Second uh, Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, and spared not the old world, like I just read about in Genesis. But save Noah, the eighth person of a preacher, Salakia. But save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And we know Noah at that time, he was out there preaching before the rain actually came to flood the earth at that time. And just like people scoff and mock at the word today when brothers out there preaching, putting up shows. Hey. You know. These things, nothing new under the sun. It says, and turning, verse 6, here's the point, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. And we know spiritually that this place 
has the, 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 the behaviors and the whole spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah, those cities that the Most High condemned. I'll continue. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them after, making them an example unto those after that should live ungodly. So Sodom was made an example for those that would live ungodly. And America, Babylon the Great, once it's destroyed, is going to be a memorial as well in the kingdom of how not to rule, man. And of course, the Lord is not going to destroy this current earth as we know it by water anymore. It's going to be by fuel of fire. Like it says in Isaiah, the ninth chapter, I believe. And it says, verse seven, and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. So we feel like righteous lot because even Abraham, he was going praying. Well, can it be 50 people, you know? And then it, the numbers just dwindled down to, you know, Lot. And even Lot's wife, you know, she looked back. Remember Lot's wife. And she was turned into a pillar of salt. But that's an example for those that should live ungodly, man. So we're hoping to be like righteous Lot and be delivered out of this destruction. There's going to be certain entanglements in this world that we're going to have to let go in order to prevail you know, to our next glory with Yahweh Shai. You know? Because it's just going to get, it's going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly than a masterpiece sneaker. Shout out to Lloyd Banks. <laughs> there was something else I wanted to get, man. Because you go through your day to day and all of that, but at the end of the day, man, Pray that the Lord just get us out of here. Give him no rest until he make us a praise in the earth. Like it says in Isaiah, the 62nd chapter. Because it's going to get worse, man. But then it's going to get better, too, you know. Uh, I'll read this and I'll just end out the, the lesson. I wasn't trying to go too long, but just rocking in the spirit. This is a St. Matthew 24 and 21. It says, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And this backs up Daniel, the 12th chapter. That's the time that we're in now. We're in the last days. Major prophecy is on the on the brink. We're coming to third world war. That's being stirred up in the earth. The time that we're coming to now is going to be like un. It's going to be unlike any other time, past, present, or future. Well, the kingdom going to be just greater than this place could ever be, of course. But it says, verse 22, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So that's what we got to pray that the Most High make it shorter days in this place. Or at least put it in our mind that way so we can operate and function and, and, and be about the, the, the proper servitude that's worthy to be delivered. But, man, I'm not looking forward to a five year, 10 year plan, but just because things is just getting worse and worse, like the powers to be, you know, it's, it's pretty much an attack on masculinity just the relationship between women and men and men that's just completely just broken down and fractured no control of the children they're attacking the minds and they're just attacking the vulnerabilities and, and impressionable characteristics of, of children and just leading them astray and everything is just a, a clown show at this point so we just got to pray that the lord just get us the hell up out of here so you know, this is just a excitation to brothers. You know, I'm just kind of venting at the same time. Um, just pray that the Lord just establish us at, back as a nation that's going to be back in power because we want power at the end of the day. That's really why our women, that's the main topic that's always brought up. That's why they're not in the, in the space that we need them to be put in right now is because we don't have any power. But we got to go to our power. We have the true power that we serve. And just crying to him multiple times daily that he restores us, man. 
Because this shit here, man, pardon my language, but you brothers get the idea. So, Lord willing, this edified, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim Rakakwadash, double honest, to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the Akim. Till next time, Shalom.